It's like when Italian kids go, I know this guy, I know that guy that's connected. But none of them know anybody who's connected for the most part, as we've said, okay? Because the guys who are really in it hide and they don't want to be known. Like Messina Denaro. Messina Denaro. Just a man who enjoys his murder, his blackmail, and his Fra Diablo <laughs> Linguini. And Messina Denaro. Italy's the most wanted man arrested in Sicily on his deathbed after 30 years. And this is an actual quote. It is a victory for all the police force that have worked together over these long years to bring the dangerous fugitive to justice. You can almost hear the fresh mozzarella dripping <laughs> off of his fucking spoon. <laughs> you can almost hear the biscotti being dipped into his espresso <laughs> as he sits at his table instead of being out in the field trying to hunt real criminals because he's part of a corrupt system that hands kickbacks and paybacks back and forth to everybody to keep a very old and ancient system in place between cops and robbers where the line is fudged. How is it a victory for the police forces to arrest a guy after 30 years? That's like fucking covering LeBron James, okay, losing the game by 10 yeah. and saying, I held him to 39 points, eight rebounds, and nine assists. He didn't get a triple-double. Yeah. <laughs> That's bragging like that. <laughs> you let the guy run free with impunity for 30 years, and then when he's an old fucking wrinkled old man who looks like a dried-out fig in a health food store, you bring him to justice mm -hmm. to sit comfortably in his jail cell and slice garlic thin and watch fucking whatever mobster American mafia movie he so chooses over and over again. Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Milini, Giorgio Milini tweeted, a great victory for the state which demonstrates that it does not give up in the face of the mafia. <laughs> the mafia runs your whole country. You guys were once the Roman Empire. And now you're like, you are the like the poorest part of the EU. You're Italy. Mm. People go there to get Fendi bags that fall off of trucks. Okay? It's a mafia culture. And it works. Messina Denaria is thought to have ordered dozens of mafia-related murders. I mean, where? How, how much was a guy hiding that you couldn't find him for 30 years? How much was he hiding, dog? It sounds to me like there was an arrangement where you weren't looking too hard. How hard is it to find this guy? The most wanted mafia boss in 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 Italy. Yeah, you for thirty. Do, do you know thirty? You know, look, you're 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 not even thirty. Yeah. How long has your life been? Twenty five. It feels like it's been a long time. <laughs> yes. You need five <laughs> more years to live before uh, it would take the equivalent of time till they caught that mafia boss. Yeah, thirty years is not a victory on an arrest, but it is a victory on a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, is is it? Do you not share in the humor of them celebrating a victory of arresting a guy after a 30-year search in Italy? Yeah. I mean, the guy was in Italy. They arrested him in Italy. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to go find him in a cave underground. They probably found him at a cafe sipping a goddamn espresso eating spumoni. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many places are there to hide in Italy? Yeah. I mean, look at him, too. Look at him. He was the most wanted man for 30 years. He was Cosa Nostra's longest hiding fugitive. Where was he hiding? Most notably in 1992, uh, he was involved in the separate murders of anti-mafia prosecutors Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy was able to murder two lawyers and a bunch of people and live 30 years. I mean, he probably went like this. He probably just went into the police station and said, 
all right, man, like I'm old now, I got cancer. I'd love to live in a jail cell now. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I lived my life. Um, he was carried out by more. I love I love the ceremonial 100 specialized agents too. Yeah. Like that's what they needed to carry him out. An old man, they needed 100 specialized agents. That's all for the photo op. That's all for the cameras. It's too late. Yeah. That's all for the cameras. Way too late, dog. You treated this man like a blockbuster video. Yeah, you're way too late. Mm. With the anti-mafia carabiani in the hour morning. So it was 100 specialized agents with the anti-mafia carabiani at 10 a.m. The Medellina Clinic, where he was arrested as a private clinic. <laughs> I knew this story would give more. He was arrested at a clinic that is known for plastic surgery and other elective surgeries. It is known, it is not known what treatment Messinina De Niro was receiving. <laughs> well, hopefully it was anything to put his eyes correctly because God damn, his eyes are cross-eyed as shit. Yeah, that, that, but that just doesn't sound like a guy that's hiding out that much, a no. guy that makes an appointment and goes in for a nose job. I don't think that's really a guy that's hiding out for 30 years. Yeah. Doesn't sound like he's that too hard to find. There just came a point where at some point they could arrest him. Nobody's hiding does errands at the same time. Yeah, I mean. No one's ever been arrested at a Valvoline. Yeah. The ant in recent years, the anti-mafia security forces have been closing in on Messina. In recent years, in 30, in 30, the past 30 years, they've been closing on him, um, seizing around $3 billion dollars 3.2 billion american 3 billion a euro in assets belonging to companions relatives and associates thought to be supporting his life in hiding and making arrests between 2009 and 2010 here's the difference between italy and america you don't have that a 30 year run as an american like paul castellano's run john gotti's run these guys runs they're quick once the fbi gets on you we get on you yeah we make it happen Italy, they take their time. Italy in, runs in dog years. They really are slow. Mm -hmm. In 2013, his sister, Patrizia Messina Denaro, was sentenced to 14 years in prison, a term she is still serving for being a member of the mafia. Oh, really? You're going to arrest his sister? What's she going to do? You arrest his sister for being a member of the mafia? Yeah. What is You have women mafia members? What is this? It's smart. Could be smart. I mean, what, you know, give her credit. She didn't sing. She didn't say one thing. Didn't sing. She didn't say anything about her brother. Mm -hmm. While in hiding, while in hiding under a fig tree in Sicily, outside, outside his home, <laughs> Messina Denaro maintained several romantic relations. Oh, this guy, yeah, this guy was, yeah, I mean, he was really in hiding. He maintained, he, he, he had love affairs. He had a full life including with his fiancée, Franca Alnaga. This segment's just fun for saying Italian names. He had a daughter. I'm sure that daughter had to go to school somewhere. He had a daughter, Lorenza, another of his high-profile liaisons with an Austrian hotel worker who bragged that the two of them traveled to Greece on vacation. The guy was getting on planes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was on planes taking vacations. What's the hiding? This is the fun thing about the media. And this is the fun thing about public relations. No, people read these articles and they just kind of mull over them, but they don't get into them. They don't, what's the deal is them. You don't take this article and dissect it and then use that dissection for other articles you can read. This is bullshit. Yeah. This guy was allowed, and I'm just using this as an example. This guy was allowed to live by authorities for 30 years for whatever reason. People paid off. It was a larger system. He had blackmail on other people until a point where there was some sort of mutual agreement where it would all come to an end. Because nobody goes on vacation, sits in a Speedo with a gut, with an Austrian hotel worker and a daughter who's in a private school and is considered a fugitive on the run. Am I wrong? Adding to the police embarrassment, buried deeply into the article, 
adding to the police embarrassment, <laughs> was the arrest of a British man at a restaurant in The Hague in 2021 after the anti-mafia police wrongfully identified him as Messina De Niro. Italians are inept. You're inept. You're no good at war. You're no good at nothing. Yeah. You haven't been good at anything except being mafia. You're all mafia. You want me to stop stereotyping you? Well, why don't you take Big Pussy's picture down at the Italian restaurant and put up a fucking picture of some lawyer? Or how about Dr. Fauci? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to throw his name in there to get the fucking chat lit. <laughs> Let's light up the chat. <laughs> Even turns out Dr. Fauci might have been a criminal. Some things <laughs> just get into the culture. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? People ask me, is there a Greek mafia? No, there's not, because we, we're not low-down criminals. Yeah, there's not enough money to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> Let me talk to my Italian people, okay? Stop it. It's very funny that they just arrested another dude. Imagine your whole raison d'etre. Good word. Get smarter. Your whole raison d'etre, the whole reason for your existence as an agency is to be the anti-mafia police, meaning your only field is to find the mafia guys. Yeah. And somehow <laughs> you, arrest, you arrest a British guy in a restaurant in another country who turns out to not be the guy you're searching for. <laughs> can you at that point say I Italians are not good at police maybe that's why all the Irish became cops yeah they're not good at police yeah you're not good at police work no you gotta get better dog how about the fucking Amanda Knox thing did you watch that documentary yeah where the Italian where the fucking cause Italians he knew he was wrong yeah too. they just sit around and they pontificate a little bit like the Greeks they create their own they think they're more smart than anybody they think evidence doesn't matter they want their brilliant theories to be the reality they want to be the one who figures it out you know they sat there D d did you watch that documentary, Jesse? Mm -mm. With the Italian fucking police inspector going, uh, you know, sitting there. He's like sipping an espresso during the documentary. He's like, he t he has a, it's a wild sex party. The whole thing, it was a sex party. She's a vixen. She's a vixen who is attracting the men with the, with the, with the, with the, with the fragrant vagina. And there was a sex uh, thing, a sex party gone wrong. Zero evidence to back his theory. This fucking bitch yeah. has to stay in Italy for 10 years. She fucking lived in fucking Italian jail so long, she learned Italian. She clearly did not kill her roommate. The worst part about it is, they arrested the guy that did. <laughs> the guy that arrested, the guy that did it was arrested. His DNA was there. Her DNA was nowhere. Mm. You know why they arrested her for murder? Because he didn't like the way she was acting. She was acting suspicious. She wasn't more upset that some fucking broad that she met in Italy who was a roommate got murdered. She was some like 18-year-old chick who was getting banged out by some Italian guy. And they came home, and she came home and found the murderer. And I think he left a shit in the toilet. And, like, there was no real evidence. There was only Italian imagination. I love I loved the fact that the guy who did the murder was arrested. The, they had the guy yeah. who did it. Mm -hmm. And they still arrested her because the police chief was going, eh, something about her. There's something about her. She's impure. Yeah, Italians love their stories, dog. They love their stories. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesse, you're a fucking sauce monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Is anything I'm saying not? I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. I don't know any of these don't people. Know I don't know nothing. Not, I don't, know, I don't nothing. know who any of these people are. Italians work on a certain code, you know? And it is what it is. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be based on hard work and evidence. Yeah. It's on hunches. They, they chased some British guy down in The Hague, and they had a hunch. They had a hunch. I don't know. You know what's funny? It's probably when they sat him down, and he was like, hello. He was like, hello. My, my name is Charles. And they were like, Messina Danini, we got to you. And he's like, what, what is this all about? What is this all about? You can pretend if you want. Have you ever met an Italian guy from Italy? You can't get that accent off of them. 
Okay, they're small-minded island people who cook fucking rice balls with peas in them. That's what they do. Delicious. You you tell him you're gonna find the the mafia boss of Sicily. Okay, a guy who obviously was not educated at Oxford University, and you're gonna think that he's gonna be able to get rid of his Italian accent and talk per- perfect British. Can you imagine being that British guy in the in the court going, "I'm telling you, I'm telling you for the fifteenth time. My name is Charles. I was born in London." And they're going, "This doesn't feel right." <laughs> <laughs> You remind me of Amanda Knox. Something that doesn't feel right. Somebody should make a cartoon of like Italian cops just running into each other like a Benny Hill. Just running. And they just smash into each other looking for robbers. And the robbers just running around laughing. 30 years. I didn't expect to have as much fun with this story. I thought this was going to be a quickie and we get to the other ones. But you look at this guy. And then he was able to get away with 30 years. He murdered two uh, agents of the government. Yeah. He murdered two prosecutors. This is the type of shit that happens down there in Southern Europe. It happens in Europe too. Like, you know, we had a, my, my mom and my aunt inherited a piece of property in Crete, Greece, right? Now, Sicily and Crete, a lot of people say there's a lot of, my island where I'm from, there's a lot of like mafia and gangster shit and a lot of corruption and stuff like that. And they, the Cretans are considered by the Greeks to be very similar to the Sicilians. They have their own code, very criminal. Um, we wanted to get a tenant out who wasn't paying his rent. So um, what the tenant did was lit my parent, my mother and my aunt's uh, lawyer's car on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's no like- way to start a negotiation. Yeah, you can't, you know, they tried to kidnap a relative who was going to testify. It's like, can we just be honest about some of this cultural stuff? When can we be honest about it? When can we just be honest and say, hey, some people have bad ideas. Some people are a little looser with the rule of law.